future of your business is here. With Wix, you get advanced AI. Thank everyone getting my screen share here. Oh. Pray that everyone has had a great day. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory to your name. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify and glorify your name. We thank you, Father, that your name is great and it is greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we bless you on tonight. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity just to be in your place, in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in your place, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in this space um, just to glean and to receive, to hear, to receive impartation. Hallelujah, to go to another level, to be expanded in our capacity. Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the transformation that is taking place. We thank you, Father God, for just a greater understanding a greater relationship uh, with Holy Spirit 
We thank you, Lord, for our teaching on tonight. I pray, Father God, Lord, that it will just open up the eyes of our understanding that we may see even more, hallelujah, of what you are revealing to us about Holy Spirit. And so we just honor you tonight. We thank you and we bless you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we are on day 23. And tonight we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit as a seal and guarantee. Um, I actually taught <laughs> taught uh, this um, last night on the prayer wall. In great detail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so we're going to jump right in. And we are going to be in Ephesians chapter 1 tonight. Ephesians chapter 1. And we are going to start... Um, We're going to start at verse 1 and read down to verse uh, 14. And this is the CSB. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, excuse me, to the faithful saints in Christ Jesus at Ephesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless and love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him, we have also received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will so that we who had already Put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. <laughs> Verse 13, which is our focal scripture on tonight, 13 and 14. <clears throat> it says, in him, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believe, the Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance and to the redemption of the possession, to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, when we look at the book of um, Ephesians, um, it has several uh, purposes. And the apostle um, Paul 
taught that the Jewish and the Gentile believers are one in Christ. <clears throat> and this oneness was to be demonstrated by their love for one another. And so Paul used uh, the verb form of love, which is agape, and he uses it 19 times. He uses it 19 times. And Ephesians begins with love in verses four through six, and it ends with love in chapter six, verses 23 and 24. And so Paul implicitly addressed matters raised by the mystery religions in that particular region where they were. And so this letter that he writes um, to uh, the church at Ephesus has a lot to say about the re the mystery of the um, the mystery of redemption, the mystery of re of redemption, and the divine intention for the human race. And so there are other themes that we also see, which include grace, um, predestination reconciliation and union with Christ. So the central message of the book of Ephesians is the recreation of the human family according to God's original intention for it. And the new creation destroys this misguided view that God accepts the Jews and he rejects the Gentiles. And so Paul now claimed that this distinction was now abolished. And it was abolished at Christ's sacrificial death. So there was no more hindrances to be made to reuniting all humanity as the people of God, with Christ as the head. And the new body, which is the church, has been endowed by the power of the Holy Spirit to enable them to live out their new life and to put into practice the new standards. And so... To sum it all up, the book of Ephesians is on the unity of the church in Christ through the power of the Spirit. So if we go back to um, Ephesians chapter 1 and we look at, uh, start with verse 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. It first talks about God's purpose in history. And so Paul begins to praise God for his glorious blessings in Christ. And this, um, this, uh, you want, may as well say like a benediction that it surveys the redemptive activity of God. And every time you see, it's almost like a, like a song. And when you have a song, there are stanzas. And he concludes each stanza with the praise of God's glorious grace. So Paul, he begins to talk about God's purposes. And in Christ, God chose us. We were chosen before the foundation of the world, before the creation of the world. And we were chosen to be holy and blameless in his sight. So the spiritual blessings that is granted to us as believers is the work of the Trinity, meaning it's the work of the Father, the work of the Son, and the work of the Holy Spirit. And so when we talk about the father's election, 
how he elected us. He he chose us. When we talk about um, the son's redemption and how he redeemed us, when we talk about the spirit sealing us. And so now God makes known his purposes. What was his purpose? His purpose was that we would be forgiven of our sins and that we would now be granted as his own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so God, the father, loves his son. And believers who have been redeemed by the son are also the object of God's love. We are the object of God's love. You know, so when we think about, I want to go ahead and jump into the focus scripture. Um, and what God was really, what God was really saying about us being sealed. Sealed. And so, um, when we understand that we are included in Christ, that the Gentiles uh, who were without hope before being adopted as the sons of God, that they now and that we now have come into the same purpose as the Jews. And for the same reasons. And so the, G, the, the Gentiles now come into the purpose of God. Why? Because they came to know Jesus as the Christ. And they came to know his, his transforming knowledge. Which Paul describes in two ways. First, they had heard the truth, meaning that the word that brought them into the knowledge of the ultimate reality, the revelation of God in his son. And the second one is that truth was the gospel or the good news, because it's not only revelation. Mm but it is also the message of the love and mercy and salvation of God for sinful humanity. And so hearing this word is vital because by hearing alone comes the knowledge of the truth of the gospel. But hearing is vain unless it leads to faith. And this is the means by which alone God's blessings can be received. It can only be received by faith. So the Gentiles, as well as the Jews, having heard and believed, have been sealed. Mm. And when we look at the ancient word or the ancient world, when you talk about having a seal, the seal was the personal sign of the owner or the sender of something important, thus, such as in a letter, it distinguished what was true from what was false. A seal was also the guarantee that the thing sealed had been carried intact, meaning that it wasn't, it wasn't fragmented. 
wasn't in pieces. It was intact. All of its components were in place. And so in the New Testament times, they had certain religious cults that followed the practice of having their devotees tattooed with the emblem of the cult. And the initiates were then said to have been sealed. So when Paul said this, this may have been in his mind. But when we look in the different context of Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, Galatians 6, 17, it says, from now on, let no one cause me trouble because I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. And so you have the Jews who thought that circumcision was the seal. Look at Romans chapter four, verse 11. Romans four, verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while still uncircumcised. This was to make him the father of all who believe, but are not circumcised, so that righteousness may be credited to them also. And so we no longer have to be circumcised. Hmm. The Holy Spirit is the seal of every believer. The experience of the Holy Spirit in our lives is the final proof. It's the final proof. And it is indeed demonstration to others of the genuineness of what they have believed. And now it provides this inward assurance that they belong to God as children. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. Galatians 4 and 6. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And so even later on, perhaps because of this analogy of circumcision, or it could be because of the language used for initiation into the mystery cults, baptism became known as the seal of the spirit. And so the baptism now is this outward and visible sign that is given to believers as the inward work of God. But here in this passage, it is clearly intended that the Holy Spirit's presence is the seal. Holy Spirit's presence is the seal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the spirit that lives in us, I'm talking about believers, is the undeniable mark of God's work in and for us. And he is also the means by whom that we as believers can keep intact, stay put together, stay as one until the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your day. And so even in the Greek, this verse may have been translated as having believed you were sealed. 
This suggests a two-stage experience, believing and then later being sealed by the Spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. But what is being referenced here is that it, it happens at the same time. It happens at the same time. And so whatever the different varieties of the experience, no matter how many varieties of the experience that we may have, that the New Testament norm is that the Holy Spirit is received as one turns to the Lord in repentance and faith. So the promised Holy Spirit is the way that um, this was translated as Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So it's the Holy Spirit whose presence carries the promise of the good things to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so in verse 14, in verse 14, um, when we look at this word, guarantee, this is a full assurance or an assurance that full payment would be made. Mm. So when we experience the Holy Spirit right now, it is a foretaste and a pledge of what will be ours when we are fully um, possess, when we fully possess our God-given inheritance. Hallelujah. So when it talks about until the redemption of those who are God's possessions, Thank you, Lord. The redemption is the setting free of the slaves of sin for them to become God's people. And we have, we have it, it's like redemption now but also redemption that is eternal. And it's fully achieved in eternity. And then God will take completely from hands that are, which are his own. And he redeems us. Hallelujah. We are his possession. We are his possession. We are the redemption. It is we are possessed because it is unto the redemption of God's own possession. And so God redeems what is his own. What is his own? We are his. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so it's very exciting to understand and important to understand how we are sealed. How we are marked. Why? Because of the promised Holy Spirit. And that relationship that we have with Holy Spirit. 
-hmm. is now that deposit that guarantees our inheritance. Hallelujah. And it's all to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So our daily um, devotion is to thank God for the assurance and hope you have through the Holy Spirit, asking for a deeper awareness of your identity and security in Christ. And we want to meditate on the Holy Spirit as God's seal and guarantee of our inheritance, marking us as God's own. We are his own. We are his own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and open up the line for any comments or, or questions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sealed. My God. Thank you, Lord. Good evening. Um, oh my goodness. This this is good and and the Holy Spirit. Woo. I I really thank you for doing this teaching because I'm learning. Amen. Um I apologize to you and to myself for the days that I've missed. Um probably be, mostly because I didn't fell asleep That's and, all right. uh, yeah but I'm missing some good stuff here like this is good food before I go to bed and <laughs> um I'm just thinking about today you know leaving bible study and just like putting together what pastor Culver said and now what you're saying is just really like one long narrative saying the same thing about, you know, Pastor Culver was speaking about God, you speaking about the Holy Spirit, and it's all points, it's all Jesus, and mm -hmm. about how, like, of course, the laws were there for us to know that we can't, we can't fulfill the law. We need Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit he says, you are, you are mine. So oh it's like, I mean, I don't know if I can like put this in the piece where you can, I mean, I, I don't know. I may not be uh, being clear, but it's just like the pieces is put together. Like all I'm supposed to do is just love and just be here, mm -hmm. you know, and God got everything else, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I cannot, and on my best behavior, I'm a filthy rag. On my best behavior, I the laws were made so that we, I can know that we cannot fulfill that. We have to look to Jesus. He is the only person that's perfect. We have to look to him. And it's like the Holy Spirit is like, I love you. You belong to me. Mm -hmm. The, 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 they will know you because I'm in you. They would know me mm -hmm. and they will see me in you. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just blown away this evening. I'm just blown away. I'm so, I am so, 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 so grateful for the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. For every, for every good thing, every Hard, I ain't gonna say bad thing. I'm gonna say hard thing. Mm -hmm. You know, oh my gosh. You know, I'm just so grateful. I just, I'm just over here on fire. I'm just grateful. That's Amen. all. Amen. Thank you for sharing, April. Um, you know, whenever we go through a, a, a time period of where we can see the simplicity. God's way, God, God's, God is, is simple. Mm 
Man is the one who complicates things. Because man wants to feel important. And when we understand the simplicity of the ways of God, it brings a, a, a just a, a whole new way of living. When that spirit of religion is exposed for what it is, it's a whole new, it's a, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. So we rejoice with you. We rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Adios. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold us because I don't know about y'all. I'm sleepy tonight. <laughs> I think the sleepy sleepy didn't caught up with me for sure. But this has been such um this has just been I don't know, you just it makes you just fall in love with fall in love with Jesus, fall in love with the Father, fall in love with Holy Spirit all over again. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to tell me about it um, tomorrow, Trey. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah, it is very refreshing. Very, very, very refreshing. So, I'm not going to hold us. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just for your love that you have for us. Just for how you reveal to us. Um, just this message of truth. Hallelujah. Regarding our salvation. My God. That the moment that we believe that we were marked and that we were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eva goes back to what we talked about in soul construction class. About from the, the inside out. The inside out. Baptism, that's just the outward manifestation. Speaking in tongues, that's the outward manifestation. What's truly taking place on the inside? Hallelujah. That now manifests on the outside. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so we thank you, Lord, that even on tonight, Lord, that as we rest, that as we dream, um, that we would have an encounter with you. Hallelujah, that brings us into this deeper awareness of our identity and security in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. That we will meditate, hallelujah, on, on what it means to be sealed by Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. And so we just bless you on tonight. Give us sweet sleep on tonight. Father God, I lift up faith to you. Um, I, I pray, Lord, that you would touch her body, that you would heal her, Father, from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Hallelujah. That you would restore health to her bones, oh God. In the name of Jesus, flowing through every cell. Hallelujah, that we command sickness to leave her body now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pain, leave her body now 
in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Give the doctors wisdom, Lord. Even as we wait for the manifestation of answered prayers, as we wait, Father God, for healing. Oh God, let tonight be the start of something new, something different for her. In the name of Jesus, that even in this moment, Father, hallelujah, that she steps into her full identity of who you have called her to be, who her mother has raised her to be. Hallelujah. And that is one that is full of faith. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. That sickness, hallelujah, cannot continue that it stops tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That we cancel it out now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we speak health and wholeness to faith's body. Hallelujah. Purify, Lord, what needs to be purified in the name of Jesus. Restore, Lord, what needs to be restored. Hallelujah. And then we cooperate with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Regarding her diet and her nutrition, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we bless you tonight. We praise you tonight. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you the honor. All of the praise belongs to you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. All right, everybody. Love you guys. Good evening. Good night. See you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs>